My name is Sarah Bodden, and this is my HI podcast concerning the topic of Lawrence and the Arab Revolt compared to Foch on the Western Front. The thesis question for my investigation is how effective was T. Lawrence's method of guerrilla warfare in the Arab Revolt compared to Ferdinand Foch's method of modern warfare on the Western Front? And then how significant each leader was in defeating the Central Powers in World War I. I chose this topic ultimately because of my great admiration for these two prominent figures in World War I, and because of their remarkable leadership, which was a product of their masterful minds in constructing battle plan after battle plan, and their determination to achieve their goals. And in order to thoroughly answer this thesis question, I first identified the aims of this thesis question, which were to compare two different war strategies employed in World War I, which was guerrilla warfare versus modern warfare, to evaluate the role of two military leaders in World War I, which was T. Lawrence and Ferdinand Foch, and finally to identify these two leaders, the significance of these two leaders' roles in defeating the Central Powers. In order to provide sufficient evidence to back up each claim I made in this investigation, I mainly utilized three sources, two primary sources and then one secondary source. The first primary source I used was titled Seven Pillars of Wisdom by T. Lawrence, which was and this book was a Lawrence's personal account of the Arab Revolt. The second primary source I used was titled The Principles of War by Ferdinand Foch. And this book concerned the scientific reasoning behind modern warfare. The last source I mainly used was a secondary source titled The Maneuver Warfare Fraud, and it was a journal article by William F. Owen. This article assessed multiple war strategies used in World War I, including guerrilla warfare and modern warfare. The Great War erupted in 1914 and shocked the world with a total mobilization of each nation's troops and its resources. Due to secret alliances, two opposing sides were formed, the Central Powers and the Allies, and throughout the war, in each area where the war was fought, the war strategies were recognizably different. They ranged from chemical, to trench, to aerial, to naval, to modern, and even to guerrilla warfare in the Arab Revolt. Two military leaders who triumphantly employed these war strategies in World War I were T. Lawrence and Ferdinand Foch. In 1916, the Arab Revolt began in the Hejaz. The revolt was instigated by Faisal, who is the king, who is the son of King Hussein. The Arab Bureau, who conceived this internal rebellion with the purpose of distracting the Turks, sent a British officer named T. Lawrence to assess the situation. He was much more instrumental, though, in winning the war than just his assigned duty as an acquirer. The first attacks were comprised of the Bedouin forces and of the of other nomadic desert tribes. These tribesmen, though, were loosely tied and were actually more loyal to their tribe than they were the cause. And unlike the Turks, these tribes were not efficiently trained or armed. The Arabs could not even fathom the destructive force of modern weapons, and therefore they suffered many losses. But, in 1917, 40 men led by T. Lawrence and other Arab officers ventured through the impassive, the impassable Nefru Desert to attack Aqaba. The conception of this battle met much resistance, though, from Arab leaders who just wanted a decisive victory, a quick and decisive victory. And it also met resistance from the British leaders who had little trust in the Arab forces, but Lawrence was very confident in his method of guerrilla warfare and in his ability to lead the Arabs. The purpose of this battle was to secure the port of Aqaba. Lawrence's tactics consisted of 
tricking the Turks into believing the target was actually Damascus. He achieved this by destroying parts of the Hejaz Railway, which distorted their movement. The band of 40 men were accompanied along the way by other tribes, and on July 6, the Arab forces reached their destination, proclaiming Aqaba, Aqaba, and they took Aqaba. This victory benefited both the Arab forces and the British forces, in that Aqaba was the only remaining Turkish port on the Red Sea, and it relieved the pressure of the British forces, or the Egyptian Expeditionary Forces, who were operating on the Palestine front. The port also aided the transfer of British supplies to the Arab forces, and this helped win the Arab revolt. And finally, it isolated the Turkish forces just in Medina. And in 1918, after the victory in Damascus, the Arab Empire controlled the majority of the Hejaz, and in effect, this accomplished their geographical aim of controlling all Arab-speaking lands. On the outbreak of World War I, Foch blocked German advance on Antti and was promoted to the position of commander of the Ninth Army. Throughout the war, Foch received several similar promotions until his military career peaked in 1918 when he received the promotion to the position of the Allied Supreme Commander on the Western Front. Now, the aim of the Western Front was simple, beat Germany, but the method to achieve this was complex, especially when the Western Front was in a stalemate. Foster's first promotion came after his failure to obey orders in the Battle of Morhange Surberg. This battle was known as the bloodiest day in French history in World War I because of the heavy casualties suffered by the French army. Uh, Foch disobeyed, disobeyed his orders to withdraw and continued to make charges and countercharges. This insubordinate act exposed the Castellan's flank to German attack and was forced to retreat. The French army commander, however, who was named Joseph Joffre, he admired Foch's ambitious attitude and buried this report. And then in 1918, in the Second Battle of the Marne, which is known as the turning point for World War I, Foch was promoted to the Allied Supreme Commander of the on the Western Front during the German Spring Offensive of 1918, and Foch successfully coordinated the Allied forces despite his conflicting decisions with journal John Pershings over concerning the deployment of the U.S. forces. Foster's tactics for the Second Battle of the Marne consisted of launching a counteroffensive along the Marne, and then this was followed up by a series of operations until November 1918 when Germany signed the armistice. And then Foch was credited with being the mastermind of the Allied victory over Germany.